So this is why both men and women wore cosmetics. And it had nothing to do with being gay. It had to do with the fact that copper and certain forms of uh, magnesium, so on and so forth, open pores, open blood vessels, and allow blood to rush in places on your body. Magnets. Magnets concentrate the iron in your blood and send it to certain places on your body. This is what we use. You think you think it was an accident or something cute that when you wore jewelry, all your jewelry somehow aligned with your chakras? Look at a necklace. A choker is aligned with the throat chakra. A necklace is aligned with the solar plex. The belly chain, and by the way, if you notice, this is why women dominated that aspect. Because woman was always the connection between the physical and spiritual world. So this is why she always wore the jewel on her um, pineal gland. She always wore the choker around her neck for her throat chakra. She always wore the, not saying that men didn't wear these or whatever, but women dominated them. Women created them. Women helped to make them come forth through the principle in the nature, which is her as creatress, creatively creating these things. So... Once again, nothing we did was by accident, coincidence, or just cuteness. It was all a form of science that allowed us to activate things within us, bringing us back to a higher state in which we fell from. One of the posts explained, now once again, we have to always use our melanin eyes and our melanin brains to decode what these recessives say. Now they go, oh yeah, Egyptians used to wrap their baby's head to make it into a cone shape. It was like a style and blah, blah, blah. No. Because at one time, we were so telepathic and there was different branches of beings of us living simultaneously with us that once we fell from those cycles and realms where those beings did not exist anymore, we imitated them. Listen, chill out. I'm taping here. Relax. We imitated them. So how do we imitate them? We started to imitate them by forming our heads like them, by doing our bodies like we do. Because this is what connected us to the higher realm in which we fell from. The same way today we fell so goddamn low. I mean, we like dirt, 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 gravel, dirt bottom. What do we do? We do Catholic church rituals. You know, we wear crosses around our necks. You know, we, we put our hands together and pray. That goes into the um, the mudras, M-U-D-R-A-S. The different, the different ways to hold your hands in order to conduct energy or transfer it. This is why, if you notice, they always show the symbolism when somebody's meditating when they're like this. They're holding their forefinger and their thumb together. And all, that's, that's called mudras. Now, people think it's a joke, but there's many different type of mudras. But they keep showing you the same one and, and a person go, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Now, the OM aspect goes into the fact that the many infinite creations of solar systems and universes within the omniverse, that is omniscient, are based off tones. One of the universal tones is OM. And this is why when we meditated, we said OM. Now, of course, they turned that into a joke now. Now it's like, you know, you hear it and it's like, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? But once again, if we notice, when we make certain tone sounds, you can feel your chest plate vibrate. You can feel your solar plex begin to send signal. As a matter of fact, you can feel your cranial vibrate. And as we know, what's the two things on the side of your head? What do they call them? Temples? Your temples. Why is it called a temple? Why you have a left temple and a right temple? We're not thinking the origin of the words we use to describe parts of our body that's divine. We also don't think of if you tap your temple, why on your entire skull does that seem like the softest or the most vulnerable part? There's so many different levels that we can take so many different things because everything is levels and everything is infinite. But once again, I think we need to come to a true inner, under, and overstanding that we are a falling people. And we have fallen so extremely far that we become content with the slight, small levels we reach above our current fall. You should never be content with any level. Because as you already know, brother, what's the three keys? <laughs> Abundance. 
source knowledge, uh, divine ascension, and infinite expansion. Infinite expansion, brother. Keep going out just like the dark matter in space. It infinite expansion, infinitely brother. Expanding. Infinite expansion. So anytime you become content with RBG, anytime you become content with we're all Moors, anytime you become content with Kemen is the best. You have limited yourself and therefore are missing a key. Actually, technically missing all keys. Because... So you're not using tool, <laughs> you <stop> <laughs> And you're not ascending anymore. Once you there you go, it. my brother. There you go. So now you're stuck trying to be a perfect vegan. Now you're stuck trying to find the best shea butter. Now you're stuck worshipping crystals. These are all nothing but small, microscopic, fractional tools that are so low to you that you begin to utilize them in order to reach higher states. But, um, yes, brother. I mean, is there anything that you would like to add? Or I know I was just going all different ways. It actually caught me at the mudras part because in Islam... Uh, right after you finish praying, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, you know, say, say the names of Allah, uh, 33 times. Well, not all of them, but three is, uh, three specifically. Uh, let me see if I can even remember all of them. Uh, I remember only two, actually. I only remember Alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar. Now, and the thing is, I've never seen any other race do it because I prayed next to a lot of people, or white people, Arabs and whatnot. I've only seen African dark-skinned people do this. They'll count on their fingers like this, counting the because it's split up into three. One, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And count continuously do it thirty-three times and then move on to the next. Mm. And that sparked something in me. I just realized we're the only person that I, from observation, from observation, I'm the only per, I, we're the only ones who've done, who've done it mm -hmm. that I've seen do it. So that's just. That clicked in me, so you know I might have to do some more research uh, on. Look up mudras. mudras. Look up mudras. Yeah. M U D R A S. And then see, as a matter of fact, you might as well start telling me what, where, where, if you know the source of the mudras, where did it come from? Well, the from? source of the mudras is always you, but they like to attribute it to India and all of that. But once again, let's mm -hmm. never forget that Indus Kush Valley was settled by Kushites. So never forget that if you notice. The recessive loves to attribute all knowledge and science to anybody that's not you. Mm -hmm. So they'll go, oh, the Mudras, the Indians do the Mudras, and India did this, and China did this, and oh, the acupuncture in China, and da, da, da. but nobody's ever mentioning you. And if they do mention you, it's stuck in Egypt. And I believe I explained to you why they do that, because Egypt is one of the only places in Africa that they can use an excuse of not being black because Egypt was so amalgamated through so many invasions and it was so close to these different places outside of Africa. But um, the Mudras is nothing but yourself again. And once again, it is the practice of these certain tools in order to generate this energy in your body. Because if you notice, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about Mudras? We're talking about making connections with your physical body so energy does not escape. It continues to spiral within itself. Ah, uh, that's what you do. Circle. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right, when your hands Circle has no what and no what. No beginning and, and no, no end. end. So when you keep your hands open, the energy is escaping. Uh huh. Then the energy is continuing. There you go, brother. That's why, by the way, um, it's it's deeper than that, but that's the basic concept. But that's why, by the way, one of the best forms of mudras is a fist. Ah. <laughs> a close, a tightly clenched fist, and I'll connect it to something else. Um, there's another science about the foot when, um, if you notice, see, people think that so-called Salat and all of these things started with Muslims or Arabs, mm. but there's actual ancient depictions in Kemet of them sitting there praying in front of the, uh, it's in my archives cause it's a tree. I'll pull it out the subconscious, but they're sitting there so-called, I say so-called making Salat. And by the way, Salat means raising cool and leading fire. Okay. But making Salat, and if you notice, if you look at their foot closely, they're on the ball of their foot, uh -huh. and they're bending their foot like this mm -hmm. into a curve, Yeah, you see? So, once again, 
nothing is coincidence and everything is a, is a, a form of science in order to activate what has already been in you, bringing you back to levels that you have fallen from. While these white people are trying to be more human and raise themselves, they haven't fallen from nothing. They started and they, they, theirs is the opposite because they, they came to this state right now. They've risen to, to mankind. <laughs> we fall into humankind. You see, so we must never forget that. We must never forget that. And you are the source of all things. So every time you look at another culture, don't ever attribute it as that culture being that. The only thing you could attribute is the mutation of you as the source.